In this video, we are going to take a look at the very basics. How to get started with a Deathwood Charmy. This is the updated version of my previous guide released back in February. This new version includes both the chapter approved points changes, relevant FAQs, as well as new miniature releases that happened since then. First we will quickly look at what rulebooks are required and what else can be helpful when building a fresh Deathwatch army. Second, we will go through a couple of box deals and see how well they can be used for a Deathwatch army. After that, we will also look at what additional units can be useful after you have started with an initial package deal and wish to keep building up your army. Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Temer and I will be guiding you through this video. Warhammer 40k is quite heavy on the rules and as such there are a minimum number of rulebooks required in order to be able to play the game. These include the Warhammer 40k 9th edition core rulebook, the Space Marine Codex, as well as the Death Watch supplement. Basically, the Death Watch supplement is only an extension of the Space Marine Codex and for a variety of data sheets, stratagems and so on, you will need to dig through the actual Space Marine Codex in addition to the Death Watch one. Recently, there has also been the release of the chapter approved MK2 book, which features both updates to secondary objectives as well as points changes to several units, including some for Space Marines and Death Watch. These are considered to be mandatory. Lastly, what is also important to know is that there is a Warhammer FAQ page where revisions of the codexes are released from time to time. For both the Space Marine Codex as well as the Deathwatch supplement, FAQs have been released to the state that clarify certain rules or, similar to the chapter approved MK2, rebalance the cost for units or specialisms. The good thing is that these FAQs are always available for free on the website. With rulebooks out of the way, let's have a look at the actual models. Before we continue, a quick note on the prices. Whenever I'm mentioning any numbers in this video, I'm referring to the rest of the world pricing in US dollars found on the official GW web store. Being Swiss, this no doubt means that I'm getting overcharged, as it always happens, so these prices may differ depending on where you are and what local stores you have available. Nevertheless, they just act as a reference points for the purposes of this video. Now, we cannot get this started without first mentioning the cornerstone of every Deathwatch army, the Deathwatch upgrade frame. You will no doubt start to both love and hate this one, as it will be your best source of the unique left shoulder pads of the Deathwatch. It was originally created for the classic Firstborn Marines and comes with 10 regular shoulder pads, 2 Terminator pads, 1 chest plate, 2 helmets, 1 power sword and 3 icons. The good news is that the shoulder pads can also be used on Primaris models, with the regular ones fitting the Tacticus or Phobos armor, while the Terminator one can be used for Gravis model and certain special HQs. With the popularity of Gravis models, this can become quite tiresome though, as two shoulder pads per frame isn't exactly much. By now, there are various alternative sources for getting similar looking pads in bulk. However, I want to briefly mention that GW has recently updated their model requirements for events at Warhammer World. I quote, commercially available third-party 3D printed parts aren't permitted though. Please bear in mind that if we do spot cast printed parts on miniatures at our events, we will ask you to prove where they're from and may ask for them to be removed if there's any doubt as to their origins. The link to the full requirements is in the description. In short, GW has pretty much banned any commercially available 3D printed parts from their tournaments. In practice though, I think it is up to each individual to decide whether they actually plan to attend any such events and if they are worth getting locked out of 3D printed parts. 
The Death Watch upgrade frame aside, it can also be useful to have frames from different chapters which will help with making your models look more unique. When recruited to the Death Watch, a Space Marine will move their original chapter pauldron to the right shoulder. This goes well with the other chapter's upgrade frames, as they usually contain plenty of shoulder pads. With that out of the way, let's have a look at the first box, the Combat Patrol Death Watch. This one really tends to split the community, and personally I consider it a bit of an oddball. One would think that a combat patrol dedicated to the Death Watch would be the obvious pick, but I think GW has dropped the ball on this one. While the two upgrade frames and the apothecary are excellent, the rest of the box has not much synergy with Death Watch. The main reason for this is that the trademark of the Death Watch are the kill teams, and these always require a minimum of 5 models of a certain unit. Therefore, including 10 intercessors is average at best, as you only need 5 for a kill team. Now, you could of course aim for 2 for the skill teams, but I think that especially for newer players, this so much locks you into one specific kind of list. In this particular case, you would want Outriders and or Hellblasters, neither of which is part of any combat patrol. Along the same lines, the aggressors are still decent, when included in the Indomitor kill team, but then you would also need to get a box of heavy intercessors, which are the mandatory starting point of that specific kill team. Sure, you can run the aggressors as they are, but you can do that with any Space Marine army, so why would they be in a Death Watch combat patrol box? The lieutenant is even worse, as Death Watch gets a multitude of wound rerolls that make this HQ choice less desirable than in other armies. If you really wanted a lieutenant, the one from the Indomitus box with the Storm Shield would be preferable. I will get to that later on. So all in all, I think that the Combat Patrol Death Watch is not an ideal pick on its own, but if you have the budget for multiple purchases, it can be combined with another Combat Patrol and or unit sold separately. The second box we are looking at is the Combat Patrol Dark Angels. This one is my personal favorite and overall recommendation if you want to narrow things down to a single combat patrol, as all its models are currently competitive. Dreadnoughts are in an excellent position in 9th edition, and the Redemptor certainly counts among the top ones from the regular codex. Furthermore, 5 Intercessors is a good amount to get started on what can later become a 40 skill team. I do also like the Inceptors, as they they remain strong even after several points adjustments. As of the latest June FAQ, the Plasma variant is now at 60 points, which is a bit steep, but still a staple of an Indometer kill team making use of mixed units, together with heavy intercessors and aggressors. On the other hand, the Bolter variant is down to 40 points each, which is quite a bargain, and they are even a good option as their own squad when freshlings starting out and lacking additional models. Furthermore, as previously mentioned, having upgrade frames from different chapters is fine. Last and certainly least in this particular box, I'm not overly fond of the food slogging Primaris Chaplain, as I think pretty much any other version is preferable over this one. But having a Chaplain as such is great, and this one could be converted to serve as one of the other versions. The third box we are looking at is the Combat Patrol Blood Angels. Prior to the Dark Angels Combat Patrol, this one has been my personal favorite and an incredibly positive surprise back when it came out. Deathwatch Librarian Powers got a massive boost with the new supplement, and having one is excellent these days. Also, with 5 Intercessors and 5 Infiltrators, this box is providing the perfect entry for starting both a Fortis and a Spectre skill team. 
a squad of infiltrators is also great to just run on their own because of their deep strike denial ability. Again, as with the Dark Angels box, having upgrade frames from different chapters is not a bad thing. As previously mentioned, the aggressors are decent when mixed with other units, though I think I would prefer having the Inceptors from the Dark Angels box instead. While perhaps having fallen a bit out of fashion, the Impulsor is still a valid pick for for transporting slow units, such as Playcard Veterans, in case you are planning on getting some of these. Between this and the Dark Angels Combat Patrol, I would prioritize the Dark Angels one for the Dreadnought over the Impulsor, unless you really wanted the latter. Now let's move on to the most recent Combat Patrol Space Marines. Bad news first. Originally, there used to be the Start Collecting Vanguard Space Marines box, which was this new Combat Patrol minus the Impulsor at the very affordable price of $95. As I mentioned back in February, this was the one box I wish I had done my research on before, and I regret not having bought it back in the days when I started with my Phobos units for a Spectre skill team. While you might still find this box in a local store, it is currently listed as no longer available on the official GW website, and I highly doubt that they will bring it back now that they have released the Combat Patrol instead. Originally, the start collecting was priced so nicely that purchasing the 10 Infiltrators at 60 bucks and 3 Eliminators at 50 bucks would already put you over the total amount of the start collecting box, meaning you got the somewhat mediocre lieutenant and the suppressors for free. Not directly relevant for Deathwatch at the moment, but this box is also currently the only way to get the suppressors in the first place. However, now that they bundled the former Vanguard with the Impulsor for the new Combat Patrol, the same issue as with the Blood Angels Combat Patrol applies. Unless you really want that Impulsor, the box is far less of a bargain. Another potential issue are the Eliminators. In the recent June FAQ, the last Fuzil, which is their second loadout, has dropped to a very affordable 5 points, and running Eliminators with last Fuzil has now become a very viable option. However, with this particular box including easy to build models, the eliminators only come with the sniper rifle loadout. All in all, if you can still get your hands on the old Start Collecting Vanguard and you plan to use your Eliminators with the Sniper Rifles, which is also a great option, then I would recommend that box. Otherwise, I would skip it entirely and just go for the individual kits for the Eliminators and the Infiltrators instead. Next one is Space Marines Honored of the Chapter. This is basically what's left of the original Indomitus box, which has has been the flagship for 9th edition, including both Space Marines and Necron models. It has been immensely popular about a year ago when it got released and has several good options for Deathwatch, including the Primaris Captain and Lieutenant, which both carry a Storm Shield, which is rare for Primaris models. If you happen to still find one at a local store, I consider it still worth picking up, especially in case you can split the cost with a friend taking over the Necron half. All in all, Indomitus has brought a series of strong Primaris units that generally perform well in Space Marine armies, including the Death Watch. While this box is not strictly aimed at building kill teams, it can be great to have some of these units alongside one of the Combat Patrol boxes, or just in general to bolster the kill teams of the Death Watch. As previously mentioned, the foot slogging chaplain could do with a mobility upgrade, and the blade guard ancient is most likely the one model in that box that needs some kind of conversion to properly fit into a Deathwatch army. I've seen several good ones though, including another blade guard veteran or even a librarian. 
up until now, all these boxes have been about primary space marines, so it's time to look at what's still available for our beloved firstborns. If you can still get your hands on it, the old start collecting Death Watch is the hidden gem among all of these. It contains 10 Death Watch veterans with a lot of weapon options, Captain Artemis, a venerable Dreadnought and Death Watch upgrade frames. All of these are excellent picks and Death Watch is certainly one of those armies that can still make Firstborns work. No small thanks to the Proteus kill team. For more information on specific loadouts for the Death Watch veterans, check out my guide to the Proteus Kill Team loadouts linked in the description. In case the old start collecting is unavailable or you are looking for even more Death Watch veterans, there is of course still the Death Watch Kill Team box with the 5 veterans and a variety of weapons. Basically, the start collecting box contains two of these kits, the loadouts are the exact same. In combination with the Death Watch veterans, the Vanguard Veteran Box is also an excellent pick, as both Death Watch Veterans and Vanguard Veterans can form the Proteus Kill Team. Or you might simply be looking for more close combat weapons and storm shields. A third possible competitor is the Sternguard Veteran Box, as it contains a bunch of combi weapons and the Space Marines have the veteran kind of look to them that makes the parts great for kit bashing and tweaking your Death Watch Veterans first. With the relevant box deals covered, what else can we get for our Death Watch army? The good news is that 9th edition has unlocked a large majority of Space Marine models for the Death Watch, so there are plenty of ways to extend your Death Watch army firm. Of special note is the Watchmaster, which is basically the Chapter Master equivalent for the Death Watch and the only way to get access to the Chapter Master kind of rerolls. In general, it is a good idea to build around the different kill teams and buy additional units that fit into those. For more details about what kind of combinations are available for each kill team, feel free to check out my kill team series, which I have linked in the description. While the new releases are often focused around the primary space marines, the Death Watch is the kind of army that can also make the firstborns work. As a rule of thumb, what works well in other Space Marine armies usually also works well in the Death Watch, which is especially true for several of the Indomitus model releases. Looking beyond the combat patrols, I would recommend the following units. If you have intercessors available from one or several of the combat patrols, building up a forest kill team with either outriders or hell blasters works well. You will need 4 to 5 outriders, which means that when going for 2 boxes of 3 outriders, you will have one spare. A good way to salvage this one is to kit bash a chaplain on bike if you happen to have a Primaris Chaplin model, which for instance comes with the Dark Angels Combat Patrol or the Honored of the Chapter box. If you didn't already pick up the Dark Angels Combat Patrol containing a Redemptor Dreadnought, getting at least one is always a viable purchase. Furthermore, in order to build an Indometer Kill Team, you will need a box of heavy intercessors. In general, one Indometer Kill Team is usually enough, so one box of five heavy intercessors will have you covered. While plenty of good units are from the Primaris range, one thing that stands out in Death Watch is that their HQ tend to be oriented towards Firstborns. This is mostly tied to popular relic choices, which require certain war gear that is far easier to get on Firstborns. Both the Captain and the Librarian are often used with Jump Packs. For the Chaplain, both the Jump Pack variant as well as the Primaris one on bike can be put to good use. I would decide this based on whether you get the Outriders anytime soon or not. To wrap things up, in order to play a Death Watch army, both the Space Marine Codex as well as the Death Watch supplement are required. As of today, there has also been the release of the chapter approved MK2 as well as additional FAQs that contain some important changes. When going for a combat patrol, then the Death Watch one is alright, though easily outperformed by the Dark Angels one, which is my personal favorite. In addition to this, also the combat patrol blood 
Blood Angels or the most recent combat patrol for Space Marines is usable, though in the case of the latter, if you can still get your hands on the old start collecting Vanguard, then I would recommend this one over the new combat patrol Space Marines. Speaking of old start collecting deals, there used to be the fantastic start collecting Death Watch with several viable firstborn models, but that one is getting harder and harder to find these days. Outside of focusing on the different kill teams, several of the recent Indomitus Primaris models work well with Death Watch, and so do some of the old classics like Vanguard Veterans or even Terminators. For more information on the kill teams and their viable loadouts, feel free to check out my guides linked in the description. All in all, now is as good a time as ever to get started with a new Death Watch army. Over these past few months, Death Watch has been doing well enough even at tournaments. You can find relevant results and tournament lists on my channel. So that's it for getting started with the Death Watch in 9th edition. What kind of box deals do you guys consider worthwhile and which models are must-haves for you? Did I miss anything important? Let me know in the comments. Finally, I would also like to mention that there is a Swiss Hammer Facebook page where I will be posting links to my videos as well as articles I find of interest. I do read a lot about the hobby, but not all of it will always end up as its own video. I look forward to seeing you there as well. I do also have a Patreon page. If you like my content, any additional support is greatly appreciated as it helps me invest into future videos. As always, thank you very much for watching guys. Your continued support is greatly appreciated. I hope you have been enjoying this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.